then I started remembering my own experiences of sexual misconduct over the course of my life. Not just the relatively innocuous examples, like the photographer who invited me to his skinny dip sausage sizzle in my first week as a cadet journalist in the 1980s. Or the editor of the very well-respected magazine I worked for in the 1990s, who hung a Sports Illustrated calendar on the wall of his office, or the time a man exposed himself. To me on a Sydney street and the policeman to whom I reported it asked if I was flattered or offended, novelist Juna Diaz is facing allegations of sexual misconduct from fellow authors. Photo, AP, file for my generation, women aged over 40 who put up with the patronizing tones and the pats on the bum, the sexism and sexual misbehavior didn't stop when the naked calendars came down. And reporting it to the authorities wasn't much help either. I had hoped that times had changed, now perhaps, it is time for a reckoning for those of us over 40, to examine the tally of our own experiences of, historical, sexual misconduct. I don't use the word, historical, to in any way distance or minimize anything untoward that may have happened in the past. I sat through too many sessions of the Royal Commission into Childhood Sexual Abuse to know the impact of abuse is lifelong, but I thought of all the women I know who have either left their careers or been sidelined by type E, for entitled, personalities, who are not always men, but more often than not are, as Monica Byrne calls it, the sheer volume of And she realized the only way things are going to change when it comes to sexual misconduct is to say something. As a result of Clemens and others saying something, the Boston University where Diaz teaches creative writing, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has launched an investigation and several events he was due to appear at have been cancelled. Though Clemens still has not had a personal apology. So, I am encouraging every woman of every age to drop the empathy. I call on you to confront these men, and call them out to their face, even if only privately. Those of us in the media know how costly and time-consuming exposing these men in public can be. But there is strength, too, in doing it privately. Speak out. Write it down in a letter to them. If they are dead, still write it, send it to me if you need to send it to somebody. Talk about it to your friends. Listen to them. Harness the anger, like the young, flame-throwing, feminists. We owe it not just to these young women, brave enough to speak out at the beginning of their careers, but also to our sons to show them the expectations we have of them. But above all, we owe it to ourselves. No more silence.